Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season premiere of The Center. A great season premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I actually think it's interesting like how this episode is structured, especially compared to the previous two seasons, that being Cora's case and Julian's case. Now, the reason why I say it's interesting is because, like, obviously it kind of starts where it's like, okay, so whoever the main suspect is in the episode, you kind of follow them, whether that be Cora, Julian, and now Jamie. But the thing I think it's interesting is that we intercut that opening with Harry. I think that's so fascinating uh, that the situation ended up being like that, just because it's like, I mean, I get it because it's season one. It's meant to be more so from Cora's story point. I mean, that's kind of like how the, the book is told from that perspective a lot anyway. But, you know, Harry's almost like a secondary character where it's like, I mean, he's a main character, but obviously the biggest focus is on Cora. Whereas season two is a balancing act between Jamie and Harry. And I think we're getting an element of that this season. But it's just like, the, cause the, what I think is interesting too is you look at like season one and season two. Jamie's story, like Harry's story, we get introduced to Harry this season before the murder takes place. Or in this case, it's an accident before everything goes out, before the case gets started, before he gets brought on the case. Each subsequent series, season, season one and season two, Harry didn't pop up until after the murder. So I think that's such a fascinating little detail, especially because we had this moment of Jamie and uh, Harry not realizing it. Either, neither one of them's realized it, but maybe later on they will. They actually crossed paths like when uh, he got off the train or, uh, yeah, when he got off the train, he literally walked, past, Jamie walked past Harry, who was meeting up with his daughter and his grandson. Now, I'm interested to see if that ends up being a bigger plot point. That was an element in season one, obviously, with the whole complicated thing of his marriage. Obviously, their full-blown divorce in season two, but that's all we really got of that. But I'm curious, like, what his relationship is going to be like with his daughter, because... Obviously, you know, because the whole conversation is coming up about like, oh, Harry, maybe you should be, you know, looking for retirement as well. But it's like, nah, I'm still in this. It's like, oh, here's some younger folk who can, you know, kind of handle the cases. You've done a good enough job. But the, uh, his boss was essentially saying like, you haven't been right since the Julian case. Like, what was I think he said last summer. So there's that whole situation. But uh, there's an interesting thing that got set up where it's like he's trying to make more. He wants to be there in his grandchild's life, you know, um, Eli. He wants to be in um, his life more. But there's this whole thing where it almost seems like his daughter's resistant to that, a little hesitant about it. Because she talks about the fact that the matter is, like, obviously her and her husband are divorced. And it's like, oh, he's not really there in our son's life. It's like he's almost like almost making excuses because there's always like something's coming up for him not to be in their life, uh, their son's life. But then, like, there's a thing of Harry's, like, oh, like, I've been working on it. Because, obviously, as we know, Harry's a weird individual. And I think it's just, like, considering what's going down in Harry's life, he's kind of very socially awkward. It seems like he doesn't know how to really interact with people. It seems like he's really only himself when he's kind of on a case. A case kind of brings out that side of Harry, a side of him that maybe he doesn't really share with other people. He doesn't really know how to, like, human well, if I had to, like, jokingly put it in a way. But it seems like that was really relevant when it's like, okay, he gets a call about the accident with Jamie. And um, his daughter, like, he's like, I got to go in. She's like, really? This early in the morning? He's like, yeah. And he's like, uh, tell Eli, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, I can't have breakfast. And there's a look on Melanie's face, like, shaking her head. I think much like the reason why things broke down between Harry and Faye was because he doesn't really communicate well because it's not the easiest thing for him. And so because of that... And um, I think he, he dives himself so much into work because he just doesn't know what to do with himself outside of that. Uh, there's even a thing of like, oh, look, I got these, this particular series. Remember, you loved it as a kid because that's all he really has to hold on to because I guess he wasn't really there during her life. And that look on her head, like, like in her face, like when she was halfway sleeping, she says, oh, there goes dad again. Of course. She, that's why she's kind of like, every time I think maybe I can give dad a chance, it's just... It's like he'd rather work than spend time with me or Eli. So later on when he's like, oh, maybe I can drop the book off, spend time with dinner. Oh, uh, I'll check if it has like a shipping number. So, because she doesn't want to bring him around because it's just kind of like she knows how her dad is. And it's like he's not really reliable. Work kind of comes first. It did for me. So who? How? Am I, why am I not surprised? It's the same thing with Eli. So I think that might be an element they kind of tackle with a little bit more. Uh, this season, especially because they dropped that in the first episode, we'll ultimately have to see. But I think that'd be an interesting element because, like I said, each season we're learning more about Harry. Obviously, season one was kind of like his whole situation with that. Um, 
his sexual situation in season one plus his, you know, divorce. Season two about stuff in his past, particular stuff between him and his mom. And now this would be an opportunity to kind of focus on the other side of his family, that being his daughter and grandson. Because that came up in one conversation in season uh, two, but that's about it. So I thought that was an interesting element. There's also this um, element of, like, you know, because of these new young bucks, like the, the other detective he's working with in this episode, like, it seems like Harry doesn't, really, like I said, he doesn't know how to interact because I guess his other partner's either kind of not, not around or maybe he's retired because he only popped up in like one episode in season two as well. His partner he had mainly throughout uh, season one. So I don't know if that's something they're going to tackle and kind of explaining that or what. But it, it almost made it sound like Harry's the one that kind of brought this dude and another detective in onto this whole situation. Kind of brought them in, you know, kind of... I mean, because obviously Harry's got a reputation of being like, oh, like he's kind of the GOAT. and Not the GOAT, but... Or, you know, he's like OG and, you know, he's a great detective. So there's a lot you can potentially learn from him type of situation. So I'm wondering if they're setting up a situation of him, you know, being like, oh, I'm very old and maybe this is a young man's game type of situation that, you know, maybe he's kind of trying to prove this to himself because it feels like the job is kind of all he has. And if he does it, if he walks away from it, like, what do I have? You know, because obviously we know his little obsession with plants and trees and stuff like that. But it's just kind of like, like I said, he's kind of lacking on a human department that even gets amplified more by the fact is of where he's living. He's very, he's pretty much living in an area that's very separated from people. Even his daughter make a reference of like, well, what if something happens? So you need to get in contact with people. It's like, yeah, at a certain point I can get like two bars of service, but it's like, yeah, we'll see what kind of ends up happening, um, in that regard. But, um, uh, then kind of focusing on obviously on another, another angle in this episode is the whole situation with uh, getting introduced to the other person in this uh, season, that being uh, James, a.k.a. Jamie, uh, played by Matt Balmer. Interestingly enough, USA Connection wise, obviously thing I've kind of best known him for is playing uh, Neil Caffrey on White Collar, which I need to circle back to. I never saw the fi full final season of White Collar. I, that just need to take time at some point just to rewatch the entire series, but because I missed like almost all of the final season. Regardless, that's a whole tangent. But it's just it's you know it's just like holy crap. That's why I was like holy crap when I because I actually I've seen bits and pieces, but I I have not seen an act of full blown trailer. So I'm going into this season a little more blind than I typically would in some cases. But regardless, uh, the fact that matters we get introduced to Jamie. He seems like obviously like the previous case. It seems like a normal person seems like he's definitely got some issues but it just seems like a hey i'm a teacher the fact that well i mean it didn't even i'd say issues but to be fair it's like well he's vaping in the bathroom but you know giving themselves eye drops and kind of spraying his mouth just to so cover up the smell but he seems like a teacher that you know all his students love and everything he's kind of loved at the school so um, you know, we go, um, back and get introduced he goes back home and we get introduced to his wife um uh, was it Leela, uh, who is played uh, by the actress who, you know, who played Fiji in um, NBC's uh, show uh, Midnight Texas, which I'm once again, I'm always going to bring it up. I'm bummed it got canceled. But uh, nevertheless, that's interesting because obviously NBC and USA, like USA is under the NBC umbrella. So that kind of brings it a connection there. Like, oh, yeah, the kind of in the family type of situation. But also another thing you might know that same actress from it. I think she's in that. She, I feel like I've seen something recently. Wasn't it Fantasy Island? I think she's in that movie. Uh, I could be. I think it's, it's that new Blumhouse movie. I think she's in that. I feel like there was something else I recently saw her in, too. But um, other than that, another thing uh, she's known for in like the uh, um uh, is playing Reva uh, in the Marvel Netflix shows, that being Jessica Jones. She was only in season one, I think, and obviously Luke Cage. She was in season one of that, too, if I remember correctly. So that whole situation, so I thought that's kind of, you know, something interesting to, to think about as well. Uh, but uh, she's pregnant, um, and, you know, they're starting a family and everything. But there was this moment when he was cooking food that he was willing to put his hand down. I was like, are you about to burn yourself? I was wondering if his wife was going to come out to stop him, but he just stops himself, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So that's that's where it comes up to like eh, definitely got some issues. Don't know what that's all about. But um, then there's the whole situation of he opens the door and that dude Nick's there. I immediately kind of get the feeling like, are you having an affair and you're not letting your and you're like the guy you're having an affair with Nick pops up at your house. That's what I was thinking. But it turns out they're college roommates. But then later on, Nick, I mean, uh, Jamie does admit that him and Nick did. They were friends. They got pretty close for a year, but he was like, yeah, I had to cut him free because Nick was kind of a problem. But he also makes it seem like, yeah, him and Nick did, you know, try, you know, to make something happen between them, but it didn't. Under what circumstance, you know, 
it's interesting because like obviously Nick was make well because he makes a point of like wait oh I didn't know about this either either about the baby or her being married so it's like so like I mean what was the, the question then becomes like well what's the last time Nick and Jamie saw each other for him to be like wait you didn't tell me about this so it must mean the thing of like it has to be recent enough that he'd be like whoa we met so recently yet you never said anything about your wife or baby and it's just kind of like you could tell he was like uh Jamie was like oh no 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 he must have something else to do we don't have to invite him in for dinner but they do uh I've noticed that thing about his hand we don't find out about it till later on but it seems like a knife wound in his hand that was just kind of wrapped up but uh it seems like he was there obviously to stir up problems because I obviously it's not till later on when uh Leela kind of like looks back on that like dinner where it's like oh I gotta tell you some stuff about your husband like all the stuff we used to get into and Jamie's just telling him like legitimately like shut the fuck up and I'm like whoa and so it's like, what is it that Nick's up there trying to, like, what is he trying to get at, you know, with this whole situation? So, obviously, that's after the accident because uh, the accident was pretty damn gnarly. And I, I think it's a very interesting circumstance to find ourselves in because, obviously, like I said, each case kind of has a very different approach. Cora, it was 100% like, yep, she did it. Season two, it wasn't until later on that details came out to be like, oh, Julian did it. This was a little different because it did seem like a more accident. And it's like, oh, it seemed like Jamie was okay. Like, things didn't go well for Nick. That was actually pretty brutal. But then it's like, okay, so where were they going? Because it's like, there's no other houses in that area except for this lady. Her name's Sonia. She was an artist. And obviously, you know... Harry was asking questions about like, well, why would they be coming to your place? Like your place is literally the only place that's nearby that it could have been heading towards. Why would they be heading here? Why would they be speeding here? And she's like, I have no idea. But then she also brought up a point. She was like, were they armed? And even Harry's looking like, what? Because I'm like, even I'm like, why would you ask such a specific question? Like, I guess maybe the assumption could be like, oh, they were rushing here. Maybe they were planning to rob me, but you're an artist and stuff like that. But then Harry was looking her up later. So it seems like she is a big deal. That's on you, lady. So I'm like, what that is? Because there's even at that point where like they're like about to pick up the vehicle and everything. And Sonya's nearby looking at everything. And she turns around and all of a sudden it's like, because I going that direction was um Jamie. and But he sees her. They lock eyes. And he backs away. She made it seem like she didn't know who Jamie was. But when Harry had showed her the pictures, she did hesitate. There was some, like, pauses. And then she was like, no, I don't know who they are. So it's either a thing she knows of who both of them are or she has some idea of who Jamie is. Maybe this has something to do with them back in college or something like that, too. Maybe she was, like, a professor at the college he uh, went to or something like that. Maybe there's some kind of connection there. Like, obviously, whatever this is, it's dating back to that whatever went down in college or maybe it's something that started there but kind of because obviously they were close for that year but then something went down to make him choose not to be because it turns out like Nick isn't just nearby recently like he's actually apparently been kind of in the nearby area for a while but he chose now because later on Jamie does make a point to say like yeah Nick has been trying to meet up but I kept push it, putting him off and not really answering and so he just he showed up at our place but I'm like he made it seem like him and Nick hadn't really seen each other in a while. But, I, I mean, that was more so what he was kind of explaining to Harry. Because even Harry was trying to figure out this whole situation. And, once again, Nick is weird because of this situation. Because he was like, since the accident, things have kind of se seemed different. Like, it's like, my house doesn't feel like my house, even though I know it is. But then even, like, his hands don't feel like his hands. So, I interpret that as some kind of form of imposter syndrome. Where it's like... Maybe he had built this great and beautiful life for himself, but Nick coming in and everything going down has made him question and made him feel like this isn't my life anymore. I'm just someone living someone else's life. That The fact, I mean, maybe there's something deeper to that. Maybe Jamie isn't really who he is. Maybe it's kind of implying like, oh, maybe he had another identity. Like I said, I'm super reaching with this whole situation. So do, 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 um, uh, do. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, stu I'm stumbling. Uh, so do keep that in mind. Like I, that, I'm, I'm throwing out wild theories at this point in time. Kind of don't have much choice at you know when there's not too much to go on. But it's just like for him to kind of have almost what, like I said, what it seemed like imposter syndrome in that moment made me go like, I don't know, I don't know what to kind of make of that other than maybe it is a bit of an identity crisis clashing with who he was with Nick and who he is now type of situation. So we'll kind of have to see on that front. But um. He also brought up this interesting thing where he was like, oh, like, have you ever had anyone die in front of you before? And Harry says, yes. And it's like, how did you, 
what did, what was it like? And he was like, it wasn't what I thought it was. And he was like, yeah, same thing. Because for him, he's like, when he saw Nick dead like that, it's like for the first time I was able to see him for who he was. Like, I really, really saw him. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. I should also bring up the whole situation to Harry. We might be getting some more insight on who is his dad. Because that's something, like obviously last season we got insight on his mom. Um, but now it might be a situation with dad because it's like, um, this, uh, veterans place was like, yeah, there's some extra stuff from your dad that you want to ship to you. And he was like, no, but then he was kind of like, yeah, fine. Okay. He was so reluctant to take it. So I'm wondering, does that mean him and his dad didn't have much of a relationship? I mean, cause what we saw, obviously he ended up in a foster home. So it must mean that, I mean, what we learned that last season. So it never really crossed my mind to really bring, think about the dad angle to that whole thing. But I guess maybe his dad had died in a war or something. Something like that and so he only had his mom because remember like after the whole thing went down with his mom and the fire and everything he was put in foster care so must not have any extended family must not have any grandparents type of situation or maybe there's something more to that maybe maybe not so but i'm curious like why he was just kind of he was like no at first but then he was just like fine because like i guess because it, it seemed like harry just kind of goes with the punches sometimes or it's a situation of like he, like, cause even you saw it even last season where it's like people kind of suggest him. He's like, no, and he's like, all right, fine. He kind of lets himself get pressured into something. Like he doesn't feel like it, but it's like maybe there's a deeper meaning behind the whole like no, but then finally yes when it comes to taking some of my dad's stuff and getting it shipped to me. So that's an interesting element that I'm curious to kind of dive into and see if they make a bigger thing of it or not. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. But a really interesting thing too is the fact is that. Jamie is seeing Nick like at first like after the accident so it seems like or is that some kind of form of guilt he's feeling because at first it's like he sees Nick outside of his wife's place and then later that night he sees like he's seen Nick like open a door come behind uh, Leela and slicing her throat but it's like is that supposed to be kind of like a representation of the past coming back to haunt him or some shape or form like a knife always kind of basically dangling dangling over this life that is jamie's now i don't know if that's what that's kind of you know implying but uh, obviously harry and that other detective um examine you know the car and everything because it turns out uh the evidence kind of shows that like basically looking at the cell phone records because of the pings at the tower that basically it Nick was already in that area around three something, but the call for uh, an ambulance didn't come to like four something. So that was an hour period because even the medical examiner was like, no, there was something like if, the, if they could have gotten to him in time, uh, Nick could have been saved. But now we see why, because it seems that straight up Nick waited because it's like not saving someone isn't illegal, but impeding an investigation uh, by hiding facts about something like it could basically turn this into like a second degree murder type of situation. Um, because when they also went to examine a car, the fact of the matter is in the position Nick was, obviously his fingerprints were on the side. Because now we find out later on that's because he was reaching for the cell phone. Uh, but in the position that he was in, there was no moving for him. So why are there bloody fingerprints on the radio? And that was the thing of like, why would he mess with the radio under those circumstances? And it seems like he has some kind of triggers because obviously he makes reference to, hey, here's that guy, that guy on the train who plays that uh, stuff on his phone very loud. Because it seemed like he was very observant of everyone being on their phones and just doing stuff. And I'm like, it seemed like that guy in particular, because he, he even brought it up to uh, Le uh, Layla, his wife. Aaliyah, not this guy, I'm sorry, I'm all, I'm a little tired, and I'm all over the place, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Leela, about that dude in particular, and like, they kind of joked about it, so it seems like it's a daily occurrence, but maybe there's something there, because it turns out, like, they checked the cell phone, because the cell phone was, like, a little bit away from the crash, which, the crash could have thrown the phone, but... Uh, the detective had brought up the fact that he had to turn on the phone. It's like, whoa, whoa, you turn on the phone. It's like, yeah, what percentage was it on? I mean, it had power. And it's like, yeah, it was like 30%. Yeah, but it's like, if that is the case, why was the phone off? That means someone turned it off. They ran prints on it. There were none. So meaning that white got wiped down. And as we see Jamie, like, oh, my God. And like, you know, Nick is like, call, call 911 or an ambulance. And... Jamie picks up the phone and turns it off. And there's this interesting thing where Nick just goes, 
okay, and just accepts it. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Like, he knew what was happening. I guess he wasn't going to fight it. And he's like, oh, I see what you're doing. Like, oh, whatever secrets we have, you're going to let them die with me. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Because even what's interesting is, like, because they were driving there, he was saying, like, you should speak less when we get there. So, which we're assuming it's Sonya's place. So, like, that's why I'm kind of like, she has to have something to do with this. She must have invited them over or something. Because that's the thing, like, because that was something that was never really answered of, like, why, like, despite that dinner and everything, why did Jamie go with um, Nick? Like, we never got that conversation of, like, how he ended up in the car. But obviously, things are starting to fall into place to be like, yeah, things definitely are suspicious. That the fact of the matter is, there is stuff that Nick is hiding now. What that stuff is necessarily, we'll ultimately have to wait and see. Like I said, it's literally the first episode of the season. We've got quite a few more parts. I'm assuming, like I said, I could be wrong. I haven't looked into it. I'm, I'm fine with being surprised. I'm assuming this is going to be eight parts just because all the both previous seasons were eight. But, I mean, you never know. They could change that stuff. But uh, So, we have the very least six more, I mean, uh, seven more parts, to, you know, to kind of get this slowly unveiled. So, like I said, right now, I'm just throwing out wild theories about, you know, what this whole uh, situation could be. So, we'll ultimately have to wait and see. Like I said, this season is already stepping up uh, to bring about some, like, even with this just one episode, it's already setting itself very differently apart from the whole Cora and Julian cases so I'm interested to kind of see what that ends up being and like I kind of brought up earlier it almost seems like you know because obviously it seems like Harry's kind of diving into work it almost seems like he's going out of his way it's almost like he needed this case to be more than just some accident I mean granted it turns out to be more I mean he's got a gut feeling about this showing you that he's very good at this but also proving once again he's very good at his job not so much at the whole human connection aspect to it but to be fair like he said he is getting better about it it's just you know it's something that did kind of happen at the end of season two that I don't know if I really answered, I talked about or not, but it was the whole thing that Vera has said of like, saving my son wasn't going to save you. And when it was all said and done, you can tell by the look on Harry's face, literally the last shot of season two, it didn't work. So obviously there's still a lot of stuff broken inside of Harry that he's still in the process of fixing. And like I said, I think this season will be kind of about that or at least... Yeah, especially if his family ends up becoming more like, you know, his daughter and his grandson end up being a bigger thing this season. Maybe, maybe not, you know, maybe, like I said, maybe that'll become a balancing act, you know, especially when it's like, oh, you should retire and stuff like that. Those questions kind of popping up. Like I said, I'm curious to see how Harry kind of handles all that and like how that gets handled in general uh, over the course of this season, you know? But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.